So, uh, what you are doing in regards to Greenway becomes very, very, very important. And one of my goals uh, in the next four years is we design a transportation system where the modes complement each other and don't compete with each other. Another reason that the work you're doing on green Greenways is so very important. Um, we are about to engage in a process. We're going to appoint 30 people to be a short-term task force to spend time in all the communities in the city to hear from folks in the city about what they're looking for from a transportation system and a transportation department. We just completed a similar uh, exercise uh, in the city around what folks are looking for from a police chief and a police department and it was a pretty amazing discussion. And what was amazing about the discussion was first how honest people would were about the problems but second how much in agreement they were about the, what the solutions are. Uh, and I, I don't know what will come out of this process um, but we're going to listen and we're going to take that process forward um, as we, as we um, uh, reinvent, as we always have to do in government, um, our Department of Transportation is with any other departments. Um, I think I will stop there. The city has been committed and has worked with you, and I am committed that we continue to work with you. I'm committed that we make this program that you are working on a key aspect of what we do. Um, you know, most of my time in the legislature was spent not on gay rights issues, which is probably what you read about, it was actually spent on transportation. And before that, I was uh, council staff at the city council on transportation. Um, so it's probably a dangerous thing to have a mayor who's interested in one area in particular, uh, because this is the area that I would say, I, although I spend most of my time, it seems, on police issues, the thing that really interests me, the place where I really want to change the curve um, and actually be show, and be actually measure and show we've changed the curve, is in a transportation system. A transportation system. A transportation system, as I said before, that we can we can get people out of their cars, we can offer them those alternatives that will allow us to increase density where we need density as a city um, and create that new urbanist environment um, that I have always lived my entire life in Seattle to be part of um, and that people are moving here every day to be part of. Um, and so you are key in what you do and I look forward to working with you and I look forward to all of you challenging me in the years ahead, too. So thank you very much. I want to take questions. Oh, yeah, I'll take questions. So if there are any questions? I love questions. Yes. By when? 75%. Pardon? By when? By when? My hope is in the next 10 years at the minimum. We can shorten it, but it, you know, part of this part of this depends on, on on resources. And one of the things, you know, we have a great bicycle plan and transit plan and um, uh, pedestrian plan, and we do, we're working on the freight plan. But what we don't do very well is we don't integrate those and prioritize those. And prioritization means money. What do we pay for first? And to some extent, that will drive the answer. How much are we willing to put into this system, and how are, and where do we start? Which means other things have to wait. And in Seattle, we don't like to do that because that means you know an uncomfortable conversation. But we have to do that. And as we do that prioritization process, I think we can have a better sense of the timeline. Yes. I'm, I'm even sorry to ask this greenway uh, conversation, but no, oh, go ahead. Thank you. The state legislature was not able to come to a public transportation compromise that's going to work. We're going to plan B or plan two, um, and that's going to be a ballot measure, I think. On April 22nd. Okay, for real. And, and where, what are you going to do from your office? Well, you know, I have worked with Dr. Constantine on putting this on the ballot. Um, I have been fundraising um, outside of my office. Um, we just got a huge commitment from Vulcan last night in a conversation I had with them to put 20000 into this campaign. Um, and uh, we will continue to fundraise. Um, we we're, we're, have a series of events beginning next week on this. Um, I've been working with the suburban mayors, the 35 suburban mayors in King County who have signed on to this. 
This is no longer the suburbs versus the city of Seattle. It's 36 cities, including the city of Seattle, uh, that have committed to um, leading to save Metro Transit. Um, on, the, on the legislative side, um, since it was only a few weeks ago that I was a legislator, you know, we were able to pass the nickel package in 03 and the nine and a half cent package in 05, 14 and a half cents, including weight fees on cars that went to transit, um, weight fees on, on, on uh, trucks that went to freight mobility corridors. Um, and we united the environmental groups and the road and business groups uh, when John Carlson challenged us and we won at the ballot. And the reason we won at the ballot is because the package was balanced. Um, and I am sorry that there are some people in my former body who believe that it should be a roads only package. I, I'm half tempted to tell them to go forward and do that and lose, um, but I don't think that's a risk that, that we should put ourselves uh, um, uh, in the way of. One of the things we've committed to do, doing going forward is something that has never happened in my 18 years that I was in the legislature. The 36 mayors are going to work together to come up with a common King County transportation legislative agenda and go down and address both our Seattle and our suburban King County legislators and say we have a common vision. We have never done that before. Uh, in my time there, there's never been a common vision, either from the city or from the county as a whole. So we're going to try and do things differently. And finally, you know, it took some years to get the nickel and it took some years to get the nine and a half cents. And in a state that continues to vote blue when it comes to its elected officials, but continues to vote red when it comes to tax revenue, most recently overturning what the legislature passed on candy and, and pop, um, we're, we're in a struggle here to get legislative districts outside of the five legislative districts in Seattle to support revenue. Uh, but I think we can do it. I think we can do it if we're united. I could go on and on about that, so thank you for the question. I'll give you up when you're offered to challenge you. To look beyond commuting, this this whole idea of commuting, and you're talking about the single option, you And I think you're absolutely correct. And this, this, the point you raise intersects right with the issue of density. Um, how do we grow urban density in the areas that we've identified in the city to do it? And there is a capacity there. It is connected to walkable communities that you can walk to the grocery store, that you can walk to other things, a park, um, a medical uh, facility, you name it. Um, this store, right? Store shops, grocery stores in particular, the transit is available. Now there are some areas like that. Capitol Hill being Capitol Hill First Hill being probably exhibit A and is it exhibit B. The the amenities are there, the transit is there, and more transit is coming there. But we have a real challenge around the issue of growth and those commutes that you mentioned. And you know, during this campaign when people were kind of flipped out in the neighborhoods around density and growth. What I discovered as you really drilled down into those conversations, it was really a fear around transportation and the ability to move um, through a neighborhood or through this city. So in my mind, it is transportation that is the answer to your question and the answer to the larger question of density. How do we develop those interconnected urban neighborhoods, have the infrastructure that will get people out of their cars? Yes? On the issue of uh, commuting most of our by, uh, for example, kids being taken to parks and so on to play soccer at night. We can see that there are tens of thousands of trips that happen every day. Is there any hope to coordinate the policy of parks and departments, for example, with those of stop so that parks and departments stop allocating all these fields all around town to clubs that are select clubs, as opposed to being local clubs, take a neighborhood-centric view, not just of transportation, but also of these other things that make up our lives access to schools, access to, to parks, access to fields for, uh, for, uh, for our kids. 
Where he hoped to have this vision for the city. But instead of being a city-wide vision when it comes to this to his activities becomes a totally neighborhood center. In other words, could Parks and Department, for example, say, we no longer rent uh, fields to select clubs. We require all our kids, all the kids in the neighborhood to play locally. I would take tens of thousands of clubs. Well, and, and obviously, you know, I know that, the, that long before I've come on the scene that the Parks Department has, has tried to address that through a series of levies. There's a huge inequality around this issue. Um, there are very few facilities as far as parks for, for football games and the like in South Seattle, as there are a lot of things that South Seattle doesn't have. In other parts of the city, there is more availability. I mean, you're, the thing you point out is a goal. Um, when it either it comes to schools and kids being able to go to schools in their neighborhood, or when it comes to parks, so that parents don't constantly have to drive their kids everywhere. But part of this also is where greenways come into play. Um, so, you know, when I was a kid in the city, we walked or biked to school, and there was tons of bicycles uh, in the, outside of Alki Elementary. Uh, today, you see very little of that, and kids are often driven individually to school. Uh, so greenways, in, in one sense, is our ability, along with the Safe Routes to School program, something that I actually started, surprisingly enough, back in 03, um, we have an opportunity, I think, to get at that. But it's going to take a multiple strategies, and it's also going to take money. And we're going to have more to say about this when we talk about funding parks in the next, in the next measure that goes on the ballot. Yes, sir. Could, could you comment on Vision Zero in, in New York and how it might apply to any of those policies for Seattle? So I, what's amazing to me, um, I grew up in Seattle, but my mother was born and raised in New York City. So I've been going to New York since the 50s as a kid. And what's amazing to me is that New York City is now more pedestrian and bicycle uh, friendly than Seattle. To me, that is like somehow I slipped on the other side of the looking glass. Um, Seattle, I mean, one of the things I hope, and one of the things that I, I ran for mayor to do is we've got to take that back. I don't want to go to New York anymore to see how they're doing things. I don't want to go to Portland to see their eco district that they've built between Portland State University and part of downtown Portland, where they're capturing all the um, water and heat and the rest of it and going off the grid. I want Seattle to do that. So when I look at New York, and I was just there a few weeks ago, and we spent some time, as some of you may know my husband, he's a landscape architect, so we spent some time going around looking at some of the amenities that have been built out for pedestrians and, and bicycles. Um, so me, for me, it's a model, but I want Seattle to create the better model, so New York comes back to us and sees what we're And along those, along those lines, I've almost secured um, all the financial backers we need for uh, to launch a uh, bike share program this year, which will make us the only bike share program to be launched in North America this year. So that hopefully you'll hear in the week. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. I'll go as long as you want. Back here. Yes, I, I mean, the whole idea of bridging the gap, I think we need to look at that as a transportation levy um, that we, we can do and not necessarily think about even the term bridging the gap and think about how we want to utilize that money for a very different approach to transportation. It's going to be our one opportunity uh, really to identify new revenue locally. Uh, hopefully new revenue eventually will come from the state and come from the feds, but right now locally, uh, and I think we need to completely rethink bridging the gap. And and this is obviously part of what we could do. I think we need to look at how the general fund, as we come out of this recession, can take up more of the responsibility for repairing our streets and sidewalks that are crumbling, and bridging the gap could be an opportunity in my mind to do part of that, but also to build out a system uh, of greenways and other things that we need. But, you know, again, we're going to do a process so that everyone can be involved, because this is Seattle, um, and, and see where we land. So that's kind of my vision, but I'm not going to launch it until, uh, you know, I've done my process piece. Funny you mentioned process, that's what we're doing. Yes. Well, thank you all very much. Thanks for your work. So the mayor's going next to a
dance marathon. I thought you'd all like to know that. You're going to a dance marathon. Did you know that? Yeah.